Welcome to a video preview of Compass Games upcoming game Anzio Operation Shingle. Every designer finds or discovers something about a battle or campaign that creates a desire in them to game it and discover if any other outcome was possible. Anzio for me is one such battle. I see it as a battle where neither side won. The Allies' objective to break the stalemate at Casino and along the Gustav line failed, at least within the timescale the Allies initially envisaged. The Germans had prepared for an invasion and had plans to release forces through Case Richard to drive the landing into the sea, but it's also failed. So we have a battle where both sides failed to realise their goals. This begs the question, could they have succeeded using different strategies? The Allied commander, the American General Lucas, has attracted much negative criticism, some of which is undeserved and some of which is valid. Lucas never had at his disposal sufficient forces to strike inland and take the Alban Hills, which dominated the routes to Rome and the casino sector. Any such push would have soon been isolated and defeated in detail. Churchill was doing Lucas a disservice by stating, we hoped to land a wildcat that would tear the bowels out of the Bosch, instead we have stranded a vast whale. That is not to say Lucas did not bear some responsibility for the problems the Allies faced. Lucas and the Allied commanders knew there'd be a concerted attempt to eliminate the beachhead, and Lucas failed to establish a defensible perimeter. Lucas should have struck out earlier to establish a perimeter around uh, Campoloni Station and Cisternia area. By the time he launched his offensive to take these locations, the Germans had reinforced the area and any easy advance had evaporated. Kesselring, the German commander, who already proved his mastery of defensive warfare, as the Allied troops found as they had painfully ground their way up the boot of Italy. Kesselring had anticipated a landing, and Case Richard had prepared a number of units to move rapidly to counter any such landing. Despite this preparation, he failed to eliminate the Allied beachhead. The saving grace for Kesselring was when the Allies did eventually break out of the beachhead, the vanity of General Clark diverted troops to capture Rome and select the bulk of his forces, escape and fight for another day. The rules are eight pages long and comfortably fit into four sheets of A4 or US letter sized paper. The game has a strong resource management focus with players receiving a number of commands and supply points each turn which they then expend on various activities. Units are either activated singly or by formation with the Germans having an advantage as they can cheaply create camp group from ad hoc units. The game system does not place many restrictions on the player on what they wish to do. If you want the same unit to launch multiple attacks in a turn, you can. If you want a unit to exceed its recommended movement rate, you can. However, the game system is very abrasive and actions such as those will have a cost. Whether the cost is worth it, well that's up to you. In combat, Attacks secure tactical tokens, which each player then places on a combat grid to determine the outcome of each encounter. This system allows a player to increase the intensity of an attack at an increased cost in both supplies and casualties, or if it's a diversionary attack, decrease the intensity and save on supplies and take and receive fewer casualties. Units on the defensive can reduce their losses by giving ground, and units lose combat capacity as they fight, manoeuvre adjacent to enemy units are into difficult terrain. These losses are either temporary or permanent, and in the longer scenarios keeping your permanent losses of combat capacity to a minimum is an important consideration. Keeping your forces in good fighting condition is a key part of the game. Anzio Operation Shingle has a single map approximately 28 inches square. The map encompasses the area needed to recreate the battle up until the Allied breakout in May. The map shows all the major terrain features that affected the battle, from the port of Anzio itself, Aprilia, known as the factory by the Allies, up to the small villages and towns at the foothills of the Alban Hills. The map also stretches across to the town of Littoria. There are many roads shown on the map. Many of these were very poor, simple dirt roads. However, due to the low line and boggy nature of the terrain, even a minor road was significant during the battle and so all are shown. Around the town of Littoria, the Pontine marshes make off-road travel even more arduous. The map has many rivers marked, and these were to prove good defensive positions and tended to funnel the Allied attacks inland rather than use any sweeping flanking movements. 
Other notable features is the Mussolini Canal and its offshoots. These proved somewhat more considerable obstacles than the river for the Allies. A disused railway embankment also crosses the battlefield and this became uh, an important part of the battle site as well. Finally, the railways are shown in a subdued way uh, as they played little part in the campaign, but nevertheless were of strategic significance. Around the perimeter of the map are tracks and other useful information. This includes three German reinforcement sector boxes that are important during play. There are 62 units in the game. The forces in Anzio, Operation Shingle, are represented by rectangular counters. The units are regiments, brigades and some selected battalions. The British units are in tan, the US olive green and the Germans in field grey. Each unit has a colour bar to indicate its parent unit. This is important for the command and activation system. A NATO symbol is also present to indicate the type of unit it is. A large combat capacity number shows the unit's combat ability. And finally, a small number at the bottom left hand corner shows its abstracted size value. On the reverse of the counters are the date when that unit becomes available for use. There are also 115 double-sided marker counters. Each side also gets their own play aid, which includes important information, including assets that are not represented directly in the game, such as divisional artillery and further army assets. <laughs>